All right, here we have the connecting rod and the crank pin. This is made of brass, this is of die cast zinc. Not a very happy combination for working together at high speed or under load. The zinc is not a very good bearing metal. It, uh, it rubs away. It also, its wear products will score soft metals like brass. It won't show in this close-up image, but this screw is already showing score marks and signs of wear. We're going to make a cloth bushing. Here's a strip of the cloth. You see how relatively thick that cloth is. We're going to have to enlarge the hole to make room for the cloth. And to get an idea of what we're going to rough the hole out to is determined by wrapping the cloth around the screw and with the dial caliper taking a measurement. Oh, let's say it's going to be uh, let's say it's going to be five millimeters. Then I'll open up this hole to about five millimeters using number size drills, one after another, until I get to the right size. So that's the first step. It's all very easy. Now on up to the next size number drill. This keeps the hole more or less uh, straight, but if you get into trouble along the way, you'll, you'll see it before you get too far off. And it, not that it's that critical, because the new bushing will be quite forgiving and tolerant of slight misalignment. No worries. The drilling process is very simple when you go up in small sizes. You won't get in trouble. The metal is very machinable, easy to cut one reason zinc is such a popular die casting material. It's also the only metal that really flows so well into the mold under high pressure. So that's why so many things are made of die cast zinc. There's nothing really wrong with it. It just doesn't make an ideal bearing metal, although it does work for bearings. All right, I've drilled the hole out to the extent of a number seven size drill. Here's the piece of bushing cloth. You rip it to a width equal to three times the diameter of the hole. This isn't rocket science, and you don't have to be all that precise with the ripping width. It isn't that critical. But it just gives you a nice joint. You see as the cloth is pulled through, you point to one end with scissors, and then you pull the cloth through. You see how the torn edges enter it? We won't have any seam at all. Now, just to get an idea if we're in the ballpark, so you don't need a dial indicator or a dial caliper. You can do this all by feel. If I can get the pen to shove in there at all, ah, I'm in business. That's a good size. So we're going to stop here at number seven, drill bit size. And our next step is going to be to install the bushing. We're going to do that. Let me see if I can pull this out. We're going to do that with a bit of glue. As I pull the cloth through to near its end, here, in this area here, put a little bit of non-penetrating glue. I said in the other video that I prefer a chemical and water resistant glue. Perfect Glue is an American brand. It's a high-tech glue. It's a, it air cures, it moisture catalyzes, sort of like silicone glues do. You could use silicone glue, but I'd rather use this. This is tougher stuff. It's rubbery, and it cures by moisture, and it'll be cured in less than an hour. So, uh, before I, uh, and I'm going to be using this pen to get my first fit of the uh, bushing. It may be enough. If I need to make the bushing hole larger, I'm going to compress the cloth with a heated drill bit. Oil the cloth, put a drill bit through of the right size, a little bit larger than this, and then heat it until the oil bubbles out of the cloth. This is an organic material. It's hair. It's wool. So heat and a little bit of pressure will give it a permanent set, just like the beauticians do in perming hair. So. I'm going to have to do the next step off camera.